many times we hear Brian talking about NPK application. Brian, let's talk about soil nutri nutrition. Walk us through what each one of those mean. Absolutely. So before we even get to NPK, let's just talk about plant essential nutrients. Mm -hmm. There's 16 of them broken into four primary categories. The first three you have are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Those are elements that the plant gets from the soil or from the water and the air. Then we go into our macro, our secondary, and our micros. Now they're broken up in those parts and it's not about the importance of it to the crop, it's about how much is taken up by the crop. So N, nitrogen, P, phosphorus, K, potassium are our macronutrients. Those are the three nutrients taken up in the greatest quantity by any of our growing plants and crops. And so when it comes to it in an environment, those are often the most limiting because they're used in the greatest quantities. Uh, not to be seen that it is they are any more important than the other nutrients, the secondary nutrients, calcium, sulfur, magnesium, or any of the micronutrients. It's just that the utilization of them so high, we'll see them more often as a deficiency in the soil system. Are, 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 there, are there plants that take up larger amounts than say another plant? Yeah, so all the plants will have a little bit different ratio of the nutrients. Um, however, when it comes to the division of the three, macro, secondary, micro, they're all about the same. But you can look at it in terms of wheat and canola. Canola may take up more potassium than a wheat. Cotton crop may use more K than some other crops. So all the crops have their specific ratios, but overall you still have those three sections. And, and, th and that's why sometimes it's important to kind of rotate crops. Absolutely. Crop rotation will give you a lot of opportunity not only to mix up the, the needs of the plants based upon the soil, but it'll change the rooting structure. Mm -hmm. And it's just good for the system as a whole to have a non-monoculture uh, system. Let's talk about the N, the P, and the K. Walk us through those. Absolutely. So nitrogen, you know, that's one we talk about most. Mm -hmm. Nitrogen is important in the plant. It's a part of proteins and even more so it's part of chlorophyll, the green of a plant. So without nitrogen, there is no chlorophyll, there is no green. Chlorophyll is what gives plants the capability to make their own energy source and their own food. So nitrogen is one of our most important nutrients. It's taken up in one of the largest quantities and of the other three, of the total of the three macros, phosphorus, potassium, is the most mobile, which means when it's in the soil, it can move. Mm -hmm. So with rainfall, it can move down. With temperatures, it can go up in the atmosphere. So that's why we find nitrogen as being the most limited nutrient of all the nutrients. Okay, now potassium from there. So moving on to potassium, potassium is our moderately mobile nutrient. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very important in the plant, especially when it comes to stomatal mm -hmm. uh, opening and closing. The stomata is what pr uh, regulates water moving in and out of the plant. So K is exceptionally important in that. So that also means in droughty conditions or water limited conditions, K fertility is extremely important. K is also the nutrient that we will have the most um, return back in any residue. So whether that's straw, whether that's stover, of all the three micro, uh, macronutrients, K will be the one that comes back into the system more so than the other. Let's talk about phosphorus. And phosphorus, so that's the third of our, our macronutrients. Phosphorus is what would be termed as maybe the, the energy superhero of the plant. It is integral for DNA and it's also important in ATP. ATP is the energy source that plants create. So they take sunlight and they go through several processes to end up with ATP. So phosphorus is the powerhouse or the power source of the plant. We'll also see it extremely important when it comes to early establishment, uh, rooting structures and early growth. And so phosphorus, uh, especially in our environment, uh, tends to be the second most important nutrient next to nitrogen. It's one of our most limiting in Oklahoma and most important when it comes to getting a good root system established. Now, there are actual visual ways to, to tell if one of them is deficient. Yeah. Absolutely. So when we first look at nutrient deficiencies, trying to identify, there has to be one question asked first. Is it on the new growth or old growth? Uh. So that means new growth means a brand new tissue. If it's a corn plant, the very top leaves or the bottom leaves is old growth. Mm -hmm. With macronutrients, the N, P, and K, they're all found on the older, lower growth. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the first things to look at is where on the plant are you seeing the, the discoloration, the yellowing, the purpling, whatever. If it's old growth, it could be one of our three macronutrients. 
Uh, nitrogen is easily determined from the others. Nitrogen is the yellowing color. Our plants will be stunted. Uh, the yellowing will appear at the tip of a leaf and move down the midrib. So that midrib is that central component of a corn leaf, a uh, cotton leaf, those primary ribs. And so you see it from the tip going down. Mm -hmm. If you look at a corn leaf, it looks like a yellow arrow pointing at the plant. Mm -hmm. Potassium is our other yellowing nutrient. Mm -hmm. Again, it's on the lower, older leaves, but it moves along the leaf margin. So you actually have the tip of the plant turning yellow and the outer edges of the leaf turning yellow. So on a big corn leaf, all you have is a green arrow pointing away from the plant. Mm -hmm. And so it's that outer margin first. Phosphorus of our macronutrients is by far the easiest. It has a purple discoloration. So, so phosphorus is one of the few nutrients that will create a purple coloration in uh, cereal grain or corn. So you'll see a stunted plant and the lower older leaves are going to be purplish to reddish color. And, and at that point, a, a, a producer doesn't just run out and go go purchase some fertilizer. They should really look at a soil test, correct? I absolutely recommend looking at a soil test. You start seeing deficiencies, take a soil test to, to confirm what you're seeing. Uh, right now, if they're seeing any of these three deficiencies, there's still time to recover. Nitrogen, absolutely plenty of time. We'll be seeing top dress moving on through March. Potassium, we're getting a little bit closer to that edge, but potassium is relatively mobile, so we can still get it on now, get it into the plant. Phosphorus is not a nutrient we commonly recommend as a top dress, but if you're seeing deficiencies now, by all rights, get out there, put on some 18460 diammonium phosphate or some 11520 or 1034, that's our three primary phosphorus sources. Get it on now. Let the rains coming in the near future and through the winter get it in the soil so it's spring green up. The wheat crop out there has a the capability to take advantage of it. And, and actually, Oklahoma State University has done research on, on soil nutrition for over 100 years, 120 years. Over 125 with Magruder plots, of course, uh, just down the way. And where we're at right now is 222. It's one of our other long-term fertility studies. This was established in 1971 by Dr. Billy Tucker. And what we have here is a nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium experiment, mm -hmm. you would say. So where we're standing right now is the check plot that hasn't been fertilized since 1971. And then we have rates of nitrogen with added rates of phosphorus and added rates of potassium as we look through the treatments. And and you can actually visually tell a little bit different in, 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 the, uh, in the wheat. Absolutely, especially looking up, going down, if you just look at the row cover, mm -hmm. how much row space we have, this check plot has a lot more gap between the two rows than the fertilized plots next to it. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for explaining the N, the P, and the K to us. And actually, we have a, a link on our website, sunup.okstate.edu, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about this.